Well, so far in this series, we've covered most of the types. There are just a few left, but now we're going to tackle the biggest type there is. That's right, it's time for the water type. What makes each water type Pokemon the water type? And which, if any, probably shouldn't be? What are their origins and reasonings for being the type they are? Today, we'll answer just that. It makes sense why water is the most common type. Almost 70% of our world is covered in the stuff, and the same is likely true of the Pokemon world. And it makes sense that Pokemon that inhabit and even breathe the water would be water type, because obviously. So we're going to break up these Pokemon into categories and begin, because there's just so many we need to really cut the introduction short. The first category are Pokemon that are practically, literally water, as they would have the most obvious reasoning. But notably, there's only one. That's right, only one water type Pokemon is literally water. Practically. Try to guess it. What is the wateriest of the water types? Pause and guess in the comments. No cheating and no worries. It took us by surprise as well because it's Vaporeon. According to the Pokedex, its cell structure is similar to water molecules. It will melt away and become invisible in water. So I mean, if your very cell structure is so similar to water that you can melt and be invisible in the water, that must mean you're pretty much water. In fact, this idea isn't very unheard of. In many mythos, water nymphs and such would be able to almost melt away into the sea and such. And with the wateriest of the waters covered, let's jump to the next category. Fish. Typical fish. You know what a fish is. Clearly, water type. Mostly. Main things of note is that fish tend to have fins, live in water, and have gills. But they do come in all shapes and sizes. You know, let's just call this category the fish and other fish-like things category. And what better fish to start with than Magikarp, aka Mr. Fishy. Its title is even the fish Pokemon. Specifically, Magikarp is based off of the, you guessed it, the Asian carp, who are known to leap out of the water eight to 10 feet when frightened. Who knew a fish could get scared? Their leaping is much like how Magikarp's dex entry states, its reckless leaps make it easy pickings for predators. On the bright side, many Pokemon enjoy longer lifespans thanks to Magikarp. I'm sure you've seen the videos with boats with millions of fish flying out of the water. Yep, those are basically real Magikarps. Stupid fish. But Pokemon has more than just your typical fish. What about all those other gill breathers? Let's really dive into these Pokemon. So, in no particular order, the rest of the water-breathing aquatic animals. Horsey, Seedra, and Kingdra are based off of seahorses. Sea? It's in the name. Although categorized as the dragon Pokemon, and they know many dragon moves, they aren't actually dragons until Kingdra. Their origins are rooted in the Japanese myth of leafy sea dragons actually turning into dragons. Very common thing, actually, aquatic animals turning into dragons. I guess it's hard to study the ocean when you live on land. Next up is Skrelp, but not its evolution, Dragalgi. Interesting that a seahorse loses its water typing. While realistically, Dragalgi would have water typing if it had a third type, it loses it due to its other typings being more dominant. Skrelp is water because it is not a true dragon yet, as it's based more off of the kelp-like appearance of the leafy dragon seahorse than an actual dragon. Speaking of dragons, Gyarados is not one. Ha. You'd think, as Magikarp's mythological origin is a fish that needs to leap over a dragon's gate to turn into a dragon, would mean that it would be, but here I guess Gyarados gets the short end of the stick and just becomes a large water serpent monster. This is thought to be the reason why Gyarados is angry all the time. Remoraid and Octillery are based off of a revolver and a small tank or artillery cannon. Their early concept sprites are proof of this. And now you know why a fish turns into an octopus. Really, it's a gun evolving into a bigger gun. Fun fact, Octillery do actually have eight arms. They're just in the back, kinda stuck together. But what's even cooler is that Remoraid is based off not only a gun, but a Remora, the small fish that love to stick to large manta rays, like Remoraid and Mantine. Also, like a gun, the archer fish can shoot water at its prey, much like Remoraid. Neat. But speaking of Mantine and Mantike, they are based off of manta rays, mixed with a surfboard, mixed with a fighter plane. Imagine these Remoraid as guns on its wings. See? Little death machines ready to fly. But ultimately, they are still based off of manta rays, or even flying rays due to its flying type. Feebas and Melodic are based off of the old wives' tale of the ugly duckling, which was created to help Grosso children not feel terrible about themselves. We see that Game Freak, instead of adding in just an ugly duckling, they went with the better route of mixing it up a bit. Much more creative. Feebas is assumed to be a bass, and it transforms into a beautiful serpentine sea dragon. Fun fact, Feebas's name phonetically is the same as Feebas, which means shining one in Latin, possibly alluding to the beauty within. Ah, 
Now if that isn't an after school special waiting to happen. <clears throat> now to the complete opposite, a nice fish turning into a gross fish. Here's Goldying and Sea King, based off of a goldfish or a koi. Oh, and you know, one of the Hindu god Vishnu's avatars. AKA a goldfish with a horn. So basically them. Huntail is based off of the deep, dark, underwater hunting creatures using its tail lights to lure prey. It's possibly based off of the viperfish or moray eel. Gorbis is another, and a monster. Did you know that when it spots prey, this Pokemon inserts its thin mouth into its prey's body and drains the prey of its fluids? Like a vacuum, or a mosquito on steroids. Well, not Buzzswall, but rather the proboscis things that lurk in the dark. The scary thing is that this Pokemon is based off of four types of fish that really exist. Thankfully, most of them pose no threat to humans as they live deep in the oceanic abyss. And the one that looks the most like Gorbis, minus the pink coloration, is the long-nosed Chimera. I mean, look at it, it's almost a spitting image of it. Notably, the last two Pokemon evolved from Clam Pearl. How they evolved from a clam is a mystery. So theoretically, this is the Pokemon. Really, it's just a sleeping egg thing, a fish egg. Also from the deep depths are Chinchou and Lantern, both based off of the idea of an anglerfish who use their lanterns to lure prey close to their mouths before they strike. Except these Pokemon are actually cute. Love Disc, to be honest, is a fish that's just in the shape of a heart. That's kinda it. It's based off of the Discus fish, a fish that's kind of in the shape of a heart. Not a real heart though, <laughs> could you imagine? Ew. No, a normal, regular, fake heart. So here we can really get a feel as to why it's water type. It's just a regular fish. Maybe it should be normal water type. Elomomola you would think evolves from Love Disc, but you'd be wrong. I mean, they just look so similar to each other, but you know, Pokemon doesn't need to make sense. But Elomomola is based off of the real world Mola Mola fish. Just change the L placement and an A and boom, Pokemon name. Finneon and Luminion are two fish aptly categorized as the wing fish and the neon fish Pokemon. Note how it says fish Pokemon. That's because it's a fish Pokemon based off of the butterfly fish, which is a fish which lives in the water, hence the water type. Remember Basculin? Because I sure don't. Being based off a masculine bass, it's designed by Ken Sugimori, who stated, there are too few standard fish Pokemon. Basically, he needed filler Pokemon for Unova's waters. No wonder it's so forgettable. Carvana and Sharpedo are based off of Piranha and Sharks. There really isn't anything interesting to say about these guys worth sharing other than Sharpedo is fast, yo! Quillfish is a pufferfish. Yeah, I also forgot this Pokemon existed. Barboach and Wishcash are both catfish sloach Pokemon. Bottom feeders that lurk in the muddy depths of rivers, ponds, lakes, and pretty much anywhere you can find water and dirt all mixed up together. Tentacruel and Tentacruel, though, are squiddish jellyfish that are actually interesting. Well, Tentacruel's Pokedex entries are interesting at least, stating that normally it has 80 poisonous tentacles. The longer one has been alive, the fewer tentacles it will have. Do you see 80 tentacles on any of these? I sure don't. Maybe it's holding them behind its back. Frillish and Jellicent are two malformed jellyfish with sick mustachios and dresses with frillies. And that's about it. Bruxish is the Pokemon to have if you ever wanted to be bitten in the mind. This thing is gross and garish, but it's based off of a file fish and a reef trigger fish, who have hilarious faces and are the official state fish of Hawaii. So it's perfect for Alola. Fun fact, the Hawaiian name for this fish is the Humuhumu Nuku Nuku Apua'a, which is amazing to spell. Wishy Washy are minnows, anchovies, sardines, mainly the latter. Individually, they really suck, but through the power of teamwork, they school together and can do anything. Even old Gyarados runs in fear when they school up. It seems like water types really are good at making after school specials. Disney should hire them. Relicanth is a living fossil Pokemon. It really is a relic. Can't you believe that? In actuality, it's based off of Coleocanths, a very old fish that was thought to have died out, but was recently found to be alive still. And by recent, I mean 1938. Okay, so that was all of the fish-like water-breathing Pokemon. I know a lot of the next few categories could fit some of those Pokemon there too, but they fit better in this category, I feel. And the next category of Pokemon are shellfish, seashells, mollusks, crustaceans, you know, those things. Shellos and Gastrodon are sea slugs, and I don't really think I need to remind you what the sea is made of. Pukumuku is the cutest little grosso I've ever seen. Essentially, a sea cucumber that loves to punch people with its anus. Er, I mean, special organ, according to the Pokedex, that in no way is related to the real-life sea cucumber's butthole ejection techniques. 
Fionn and Manaphy are based off of the Sea Angel, a small translucent mollusk that lives in the deep dark parts of the ocean. Staryu and Starmi are both puns made flesh to suffer a cruel world, as they are starfish with an extraterrestrial nature. Marini and Toxapex are also based off of starfish, perhaps specifically the Crown of Thorns starfish. Now, starfish may seem slow, but these guys are the lions of the tide pool, apex predators in their own right. I mean, they can regrow limbs, relentlessly chase down prey, and when you don't move at all, like barnacles and muscles and such, these things really do move at lightning speed comparatively, and they are mean. Corfish and crawdont are based off of crawfish, crawdads, crawldads, freshwater lobsters, mountain lobsters, mud bugs, or yabbies. You know, tiny versions of the lobster, essentially. They live pretty much everywhere from small puddles to swamps, and they have like a million different slang names depending on where you're from. Clauncher and Clowitzer are very similar to Corfish and Crawdont. These shellfish are based off of the snapping shrimp, as well as the whole concept of crustaceans losing a limb, meaning one limb becomes way massive because it's older while the new one regrows and it's tiny. It's kind of silly. Cloyster and Shelder are clams. In fact, so is Clam Pearl, if you didn't guess. However, Cloyster, despite the name, is not an oyster at all. It is a thorny oyster, which is named wrong because it's actually a clam. What the heck? Crabby and Kingler are crabs, most likely the king crab, as Kingler has king in its name, and they are delicious. Ammonite and Amistar are lords of the ocean, gods of the stream. These prehistoric mollusks are based off of the prehistoric creatures of the deep, Emanadia to be exact, which were just basically swimming shells, much like the Nautilus of today. Kabuto and Kabutops, another prehistoric creature of the deep, likes to roam the ocean floor. They are based off of the trilobite and horseshoe crab. Did you know that horseshoe crabs have blue blood? Like, actually, humans don't ever, that's a terrible misconception. But because of this, horseshoe crab blood is one of the most expensive liquids in the world. The fun fact, Wimpod and Golisopod are two really neato Pokemon until you realize that their ability is a terrible thing and isn't useful and competitive unless you build your entire team around it and then you just get swept because that's how Pokemon is. It just crushes your dreams of being any decent. However, these guys don't get crushed by the intense pressure of the ocean. Much like the isopods and silverfish they are based on, their bodies are covered in an insanely strong exoskeleton. Hard as diamond, according to the Pokedex, allowing them to withstand the pressure of the ocean. Binnacle and Babaracle are barnacles. Creatures so bad, they became a swear word in Spongebob. Really though, these guys would be a tasty treat for many water-dwelling animals. As you know, they don't really move. That is until Babaracle realized they can not only get up and walk out of the way when they join forces, but they can even fight back. Also, they look pretty darn close to the Goose Barnacle specifically, which is a great visual until you actually see one. Nobody wants to see that. But with that, we reach the next category. These are aquatic mammals, or semi-aquatic mammals, that breathe air a la oxygenation via the lungs. Whales, seals, and otters and such. First up are Whalemur and Whale Lord, literal whales of Pokemon. Well, minus the weight. I mean, come on, Whale Lord is only 800 pounds? Not even a ton? Fun fact though, Whale Lord is in fact the largest Pokemon there is, and hopefully the largest Pokemon there will ever be. At least, non-legendary. As it's based on the blue whale, the largest thing to ever live on Earth as far as we know. No dinosaur ever surpassed its size, this thing is massive. Kyogre is also a whale of some sort. Kind of an odd whale. It's like the Hebrew Leviathan mixed with an orca which are actually more closely related to dolphins than to whales. Seal and dugong are based off of seals. I mean, seal's name is literally one letter away from seal. And fun fact, dugong does not look like a real-life dugong at all. Other seal Pokemon that actually turn into walruses are Sveal, Celio, and Walrein. Here we get a seal, but with an added pH. As in fat, because they are fatter. And spherical, too. And Celio gets Leo because it's a sea lion. Poplio, Brion, and Primarina again are seals and sea lions, but more like dog mermaids, which I guess seals and sea lions are. And Primarina also has siren elements. Moving a bit more into the semi part of semi aquatic mammals, we have Oshawa, Duat, and Samarat. This line are based on otters, hence the ot at the end of all of their names. Also, they are known as the sea otter Pokemon. I'm starting to sense another pattern here. Sea, otter, two things that have to do with water. I guess Game Freak's pretty good at making water-type Pokemon. That's no secret. Keldeo is dumb, but I have to do it anyway. This Pokemon is based off of the youngest member of the Three Musketeers. The fourth one, and lamest by far. 
Even his name is lame and hard to pronounce. Well, other than being based off of a musketeer, Keldeo could also be based off of the Kirin, a mythical Chinese unicorn that was said to be able to walk on water. Another myth that it could be based on is the infamous Kelpie, or Water Horse, a horse that would lure victims into riding it, then take them down into the water to drown them. Next is Meryl and Azumeryl. Uh, note though, not Azurol, as Azurol is normal fairy instead of water fairy. Wanted to clear that up now in case someone thought it was water type. From their looks, you could only guess that they're water type because of their color. Blue, if you couldn't tell. But really, why are these things water type? Theoretically though, these Pokemon are based off of the Swamp Rabbit, which is actually a real thing, but it really is just a cottontail rabbit that happens to live in the swamps and can swim really well. There's also the Water Rat, or Rakali, which may be an inspiration. Both animals are found near riverbanks and swamps. At least it's not a fish, right? Also, these Pokemon have elements from beach balls and flotation devices. Weasel and Floatzel are based off of very buoyant weasels. I mean, it's got a life jacket for a collar, and they've got fins, and they can use their two tails like a boat propeller. Now, while weasels can swim, they aren't exactly famous for it. So the water typing here certainly is more so because of its similarity to a water buoy and flotation devices. The barrel, I honestly forgot was water type. After all, its pre-evolution's only normal. While Bidoof is based off of a woodchuck, the barrel is based off of a beaver. You know, those damn mammals that live in rivers that love to dam it up with wood. Slowpoke, Slowbro, and Slowking are hippos. Surprisingly, a lot of people are surprised by that fact at first. Hippos love the water, and they can be pink in spots. Plus, a little known fact, hippos sweat sunscreen. Neat. And that's it for the aquatic and semi-aquatic mammals. How about waterfowl now? Semi-aquatic birds. Piplup which is my favorite starter, Prinplup and Empoleon, which is my favorite final form of a starter, are based off of the semi-aquatic animal, the penguin. Not much to say here beyond that. They are penguins. Emperor penguins by the name. And Empoleon has elements from icebreaker ships, ships that travel through Arctic waters, breaking the ice, hence the name. Wingle and Pelipper are two of my least loved Pokemon. Gosh, that list of hated Pokemon sure is getting bigger. Well, mainly I just hate how there are so many of them. If only I had some perfect Pokemon to keep them at bay while I'm fishing in the bay. Ugh. Anyway, they are based on a pelican and a seagull, both seabirds which live by the sea. Then we got loads of ducks. Psyduck, Golduck, Fardfetched, even though it's not water type, get out of here. Ducklet and Swanna. I know Swanna is actually a swan, but I mean, come on, they are basically the same thing at this point. Plus it evolves from a duck. Interestingly, I mentioned how Feebas and Melodic were basically ugly ducklings, but not ducks, and Game Freak was cool for being created with that. And then two generations later, we literally get an ugly duckling turning into a beautiful swan, just like the story. Gosh. Anyway, then Psyduck and Golduck. Why isn't Golduck the gold or yellow one? Well, because gold symbolizes so many things, including great power, especially of the psychic variety. Also, considering the lack of wings, Golduck may have inspiration from Kappas, water yokai. Let's see what's next. How about aquatic bugs? Surskit are based off of water skippers, a type of bug that is able to run on the water due to its very light and fast body. The water's tension resists the bug's weight, allowing it to not sink. Imagine like you running on very thick jello. That's these bugs for life. Dewpiter and Araquanid are fun Pokemon. They are based on the diving bell spider and orb weavers, but the opposite. These real spiders live in the water but breathe air, so they wrap their webs around bubbles to make little scuba suits. Dewpiter and Araquanid, however, are the opposite. They breathe water, so likely used their webs to hold onto water and carry it up, making SpongeBob style scuba suits. Next, let's do aquatic reptiles. Tortuga and Caracosta are sea turtles, and just so you know, sea turtles live in the sea, and the sea, just for reference, is made of mostly water. Hence the water typing. Lapras is a mix of the Loch Ness monster and a turtle-like creature, like the Plesiosaurus. And it's known as the transport Pokemon, as it loves to ferry people across bodies of water. Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise are the OG water starters. Turtles to the max! But interestingly enough, these Pokemon share significantly more traits with tortoises. In other words, non-water dwelling reptiles. However, in Game Freak's ever-loving attention to detail in making these games, they didn't really think people would notice the difference. And they also incorrectly categorized Blastoise as the shellfish Pokemon. I just don't know anymore. I mean, it's not even that watery other than the fact it has massive water cannons on its back and it's blue. Tortoises are related to turtles at least. But Blastoise is similar to a huge tank, both like the war vehicle and also like the thing used to store water. So we'll let it water slide. 
The Totodile, Crocona, and Feraligator line, being based off of all manner of crocodilia from alligator to croc, bite down hard! Fun fact, crocodiles do not have sweat glands and release heat through their mouths. They often sleep with their mouths open because of this. Similar to reptiles, we have the next category, amphibians, which are a weird middle stage between a fish and a reptile. They tend to be born with gills, but grow lungs and lose the gills eventually. Take for instance, Timpole, Palpitoad, and Seismitoad, a gilled tadpole that eventually becomes a toad. This line of Pokémon are able to vibrate the bumps on their heads, similar to frog and toad cheeks, except they can do it hard enough to make waves in water or earthquake-like vibrations on land. And that's not even the final evolution. Poliwag, Poliwhirl, and Poliwrath are glass frogs, frogs that are partially see-through on the bottom, and thus you can see their organs. As such, the tadpole stage of this frog has swirly intestines. While the adult frog's guts aren't this way anymore, the Pokémon keep it. Politoed, an alternate evolution of Poliwhirl, looks a lot more like the glass frog than the others. I don't really know what Game Freak was thinking with these. Mudkip, Marshstomp, and Swampert are the poster children of swamps and marshes. I mean, it's in their names. Mud, Marsh, and Swamp. Apparently, they can swim through mud faster than water, and I'm not quite sure how that works, but at least it means they can swim. And I guess it points to their multiple inspirational origins then. The Mudfish, the Lungfish, and the Axolotl. Kind of all merged together. Which is similar to Wooper, another little axolotl, and its evolution, Quagsire, is based off of the giant salamander that is commonly found in marshes and quagmires. Froki, Frogadier, and Greninja are frogs full on. No tadpole stage, even. They are also ninjas. Water ninjas, with watery ninja powers. There are plenty of legends about ninjas being able to run across the water, and they hide in the water too, using a bamboo straw to breathe. So, water ninja is a fairly easy connection. Some ninjas wear scarves, and in this case, it's a scarf made of bubbles, and then it becomes a scarf that is actually the frog's tongue. Because they're super long. Hmm. Well, on top of water ninja being an easy connection to make, so is frog ninja, actually. You see, there's a famous story, the tale of the gallant Jiraiya, wherein a ninja transforms into a large toad, a frog relative. And with that, we've gone through so many Pokémon, there are only two more small categories to go. The first being other, and the last one not. Or shouldn't be. First for other is Corsola. It's a sea rock, or coral, essentially living ocean rocks. Then Lotad, Lombre, and Ludicolo, one of the very few if not the only water grass Pokémon in the game. Really though, you would think that that typing would go hand in hand like normal flying. Well, being based off of lily pads, Lotad and Party are semi-aquatic plants, although this one's a great dancer. I'm looking at you, Ludicolo. Keep doing what you do. Keep being a stereotypical Mexican dancer. Also, these Pokémon draw roots from the Japanese yokai, the Kappa, a water demon that is rather popular today in Japan. Known for its mischief around and in the water, they are thought to have been the cause of many drownings back in the day. And fun fact, they share the water-like dish on top of the head just like the Lotad line. Now, while not specifically made of water like I thought when I originally saw this Pokémon, Cast Form is actually just a Pokémon that has the ability to imitate the weather, almost as a way of camouflaging itself. It uses the rainy moisture in the air to create its rainy form, swapping its normal typing for water. How it does this, I'm not so sure yet. It seems like it's more of a sponge than a cloud. As stated in the Pokédex, this is the form Cast Form takes when soaked with rain. When its body is compressed, water will seep out as if from a sponge. Volcanion is based off of a steam engine and a volcano with hot springs. This guy blows. Ha! Hot air, that is. Steam is the byproduct of heating water past its evaporation point, and evaporating a large amount of water rather quickly will produce steam. Hence, the water fire typing. Wash Rotom is when Rotom, the electric ghost, decides to possess a washing machine, and washing machines use water to wash things. Wow! I'm not sure where it gets the water, though. All of the other Rotom forms make sense, as they are things powered by electricity, and that's all they need to work, and Rotom provides the electricity. But where does Wash Rotom get all of the piping for its water? Uh. Tapu Fini is based off of the Hawaiian god Kanaloa, and she looks very much like a mermaid or siren when the shell is open, and a swordfish or marlin while closed. While the Hawaiian god she's based loosely off of isn't inherently the deity of water, he is commonly associated with it as well as long-distance voyaging and healing. Both watery traits. In addition, he is similar to the Maori god Tangarora, who is the god of the sea. Palkia is a little odd here. It is the master of space, space. Not, not, not time. time. Because, you know, 
Time sure doesn't flow like water down a river. The super common saying. No. Rather, space is vast, like the ocean. Also, pearls are in clams, and those are also in the ocean. And, uh, the ocean is made out of water. Ta-da! Panpore and semipore may be mammals, but they aren't exactly based on any semi-aquatic mammal at all. They are just kind of the water-type monkey Pokemon that are monkeys. While monkeys can swim, they aren't famous for it. And these Pokemon don't have any design elements like flotation devices or a buoy to give them their water typing. It just seems like Game Freak decided to give the water type to a monkey. However, the Pokedex talks about how it used to live in trees, but it started to live by rivers. It also uses its tufts of fur to store water. I suppose there are monkeys that are famous for living in hot springs and hunting by the river. Eh. This Pokemon may also be a visual pun on the word sea monkey, which is actually a type of plankton. This Pokemon is also part of the elemental monkeys, including the other grass and fire ones, whose whole group resembles the three wise monkeys. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Panpor and Simipor are based on the see no evil bit of it. See what I did there? Ha! I did it twice. This is why their eyes are white. They are blind, so they can see no evil. Also note, the hair looks like a geyser. Neat. While this Pokemon just barely scratches the surface by my lines of being a good reason for a water type, if it wasn't for the sea monkey bit, I'd put them into the bad category, along with the one and only kind of dumb reason for being water and not another type Pokemon. That's right, it's Suicune. Though you could put Panpour, Simipore, and Palkia in this category if you wanted. Maybe even Wash Rodom, because like, where is it getting the water? But then again, where are any of the water type Pokemon? I'm just rambling now. But I'm just leaving this category for Suicune. In fact, many of you probably thought Suicune was ice. Huh. I bet you did. Everyone I talked to while making this video did. I'm sure some of you hardcore Suicune fans knew it, but really, why not ice? Or even water ice? No, it's just water. Yet, it learns so many ice moves. In fact, it learns more ice moves than it learns water moves naturally. In fact, the Pokedex only mentions how it purifies water, which could be a fairy-like move as well. It also states that it moves along the north wind, which is cold as heck! A very icy trait. Oh, but it's based off of a Quillen, a mythical beast said to have been able to walk on water. Wow. And I mean, sure. If you change its antlers to a diamond and make it more of a dog leopard... Oh, but the leopard-like traits are from the Fujin, the Shinto god of the North Wind. Ah oh, yes, the North Wind again. The thing that's cold as heck and brings the icy times. While Suicune could be based off of these wind and rain deities, I feel like just being water isn't correct. At least not as nice as it could be. If it were to keep its water type, it would need to either gain ice or maybe even flying. There are already plenty of other flying type Pokemon that can't actually fly. Plus, its category is the Aurora Pokemon. You know, that thing that happens to the sky in the Arctic regions. The regions that are covered in ice. But I... I guess... I think I know why it's just water. If it were water ice, it would have two types while the other two legendary beasts only get one. That's not very fair. And if they made it ice, well, then the Gen 2 legendary trio would just be the land versions of the Gen 1 legendary trio. <laughs> and the fans would never approve of that. That's unoriginal. And we all know Game Freak listens to its fans. <laughs> right? Well, Game Freak or not, Suicune really is the only Pokemon that I think shouldn't be water type, or at the very least, not just water type. And man, that was a lot of Pokemon to get through. I'm afraid of the flying and normal type videos now, although they may as well be the same video. <laughs> Birds are boring. That's what Game Freak is saying. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure my attempts at making it shorter are going to fail. But as always, never stop using your noggin, and please consider supporting this channel through Patreon, or maybe even some cool merch. Thanks a million.